Hey, I'm Yvonne Williams with Back to Earth Creations, and I just keep running sunblock all over my glasses. Um, but that's fine. I'll figure it out. So everything's kind of blurry. Hey, Michelle. Hey, Sadea. Hey, Erica. Hey, Comatose. How are all y'all doing today? Also, I have a freshly brewed, actually my first cup of coffee for the day. Cheers, everybody. Um, I think it might still be too hot, but... That's really good stuff. I'm just gonna say. <laughs> I'm glad it's Friday, too. Where are y'all up to today? Oh, that's good stuff. Mm. I've switched to sugar-free creamer, and it's alright. I can handle it. But good coffee is good coffee, though. I'll take it even without sugar in it. <laughs> Hey love, how's it going? Oh, today we're working with polymer clay. I'm sure you've noticed I'm hiding in my little sculpting corner uh, that we've been hanging out in for a while. Oh, the more that coffee, that's good stuff. <laughs> as little as possible. Nice, taking it easy. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, I don't have an addiction, do you have an addiction? Probably. <laughs> I have an addiction. <laughs> but uh, let me get my tablet set up so that I can keep up with you guys' comments. If you guys have any questions as we're crafting today, if you just highlight, uh, do like um, an at and then Yvonne Williams, just like how my screen name is spelled, then it'll highlight your comment in orange. So Michelle says, I don't even use sugar when I do the sugar-free creamer, right? And that's, I just have the sugar-free creamer in there with no sugar in it. So, but then whenever I use the sweetened creamer, I don't put any sugar in either. So, hey, Mary Hart, how's it going? Ooh, Love asks, what's your favorite brand of polymer clay? I tend to purchase the most of Sculpey Primo. Um... <clears throat> just because that's what my local Michaels, Joann's, and Hobby Lobby stock the most of. And I really like purchasing from polymerclayplay.com or polyclayplay. I'm not certain which one it is. But if you Google it, you'll be able to find it. They've got a bunch of really great... Well, it's loading. So we'll deal with that in a bit. Um, Sculpey Primo, I've found, gives me the best balance between broad spectrum broad spectrum of pre-mixed colors because there are some folks who are like absolute wizards okay at like mixing their own colors I'm not one of those people and I really want something to be easy and replicable and that way also so I can let you guys know yeah just buy Peacock Pearl and that's what color I used um so that's why I like like I, I know I just moved the tripod but you can kind of see here on this back wall these are the bins that I keep all of my clay in. And though I also really like Cernit is really nice. Um, Kato and... Give me a sec. I'm coming, baby. You guys want to listen to me good, though? You got to listen to me good, though? Mm -hmm. I give her one hug, and I'm uh, covered in cat hair. Uh, Kato with a K, K-A-T-O. There's another one, Fimo. Fimo is another one. Both of those, very nice, a lot firmer. Like I actually think one of them has a soft variety out, but they're really great for making like canes and stuff because, well, they're firm. They're not just squishing out the ends the way that my leaf cane was, but I kind of like, I kind of like that because I like to make organic looking stuff and the more squishy and rebellious it is, the more interesting of results we can get. <sighs> hey Sherry, how's it going? Hey Malika, I'm <laughs> here on time, right on. Hey Gary. Love says, I like Sculpey a lot but I've never done the Primo. Right on, their packaging looks like, well used to. I really like their accent ones, but it's just Primo, Sculpey. Let me see if I have one of their newer. <clears throat> I kind of, 
not to be not to be complaining but i kind of hate the way that everybody's changing their like logos and stuff like their branding like and making it sleeker i don't know but this is what joann's has been stocking so i guess that's their new um <clears throat> and i'm just like i don't know the magic happens in the details don't dumb it down Unless that's what you're doing, in which case you do you, I suppose, but <laughs> I'm still going to grump about it. Okay, there we go. This is up now. Let me make sure that's turned down all the way. Oh, and I need to make sure that it is in live chat and not top chat. Happy birthday, late. Aw. Oh, goodness. Oh, Mary. <laughs> No, uh, it was a really nice, I had a really great birthday. Actually, today, um, our friends took us out, uh, to, like, sushi and hibachi. I love it when they do the thing where they stack the onions, and it's like, choo-choo, and the, so cool. Um, <laughs> but it was really great to get to kind of celebrate with friends. Y'all, okay, we went... The Perseid meteor shower peaked, I think, like, yesterday or maybe the night before. But we were going to go watch the meteor shower, right? And so we we booked um, one of the walk-in sites at Stockton Lake, which is, like, our favorite place to go jumping because it's really close if stuff's disastrous because we're trying to experiment to see if Randy can sleep in a hammock overnight because I know that I can personally from the backpacking trips that I've gone on, but I'd really like to kind of, especially now that we're in our mini clown car, um, I'd really like to be able to go camping more with Randy and if we aren't having to bring our huge tent, that really opens up a lot more space for us to bring like drums and like hula hoops and different stuff. Um, and so last time we tried to do that was our camping trip with Maddie, which ended up with Randy uh, having he didn't fracture his wrists again, but it had irritated, it had irritated. He fell in her previous injury. Um, but this time we booked the site, we got there on time, we checked in and we're getting everything set up and I don't have enough rope or I did actually found it whenever we got home. Um, but I couldn't find my rope for Randy's tarp for his ridge line for over his hammock. So we started putting both of the hammocks under one tarp and it's like the end of it wasn't really like the end of his hammock wasn't completely covered and he was like, you know, I think it'll be fine. Let's just relax and enjoy the rest of the day. Like the campsite and the walk-in site has like this little like path down to a really beautiful just stone beach of like, it's like just bedrock that's been exposed. Um, <laughs> bubble wrap that guy right <laughs> um and so we brought our gravity chairs so we could recline back and watch the meteor shower we had them randy had it oriented like towards the north and like our cooler for full of beer in between it and we were like we're this is gonna be awesome and at around 6 30 7 o'clock maybe maybe 7 o'clock storm clouds are piling up on the horizon and we're like of course of course they are why wouldn't they so we start battening down the hatches I get both of the hammocks clipped to where it's like they're both covered and because the wind is whipping because we're like right there off the edge of the lake and Stockton Lake um I think I read somewhere is one of the top 10 lakes for sailing in the U.S. because it's such a long narrow lake and has these like straight line winds going across almost constantly which means we get to watch sailboats going by during the day and it's really like windy and nice but also oh my god at the wind coming in and I was like no because it was a repeat of last time we went camping there like two months ago <laughs> and, ah, and so we went and we just like the lightning was getting really bad um mary hart says it's thundering here now oh goodness well i could do with some rain out here now that now that i'm in my house that is relatively unleaky i'm fine with it raining but 
Where were we? We were walking to the car when a tree fell over. Weren't we, Randy? Yeah. Yeah. So it was a wise decision for us to go into our vehicle. Um, and we just, we sat in there and finished our drinks and like had a good time. Uh, and then we went and it was like maybe... Yeah, yeah, we were walking and the, this tree falls and I was like, ooh, that's a widow maker. And Randy was like, Woods, back on the menu, boys, <laughs> from the Lord of the Rings, <laughs> which made me laugh. There's nobody else in this world that I could, would rather deal with disasters with than Randy, because this was not this was not a disaster. It was mildly inconvenient at most, but he always makes me laugh. He always defuses any kind of tension or like, because I'm kind of scared during storms. Like I've been in a tent during a tornado before. Like the tent, it was when I was a kid, like the tent actually blew up the street with me in it. So I was like, ah, <laughs> like, but as an adult, it's fine. It'll be fine. Um, <laughs> We sat in the, ch in the car, tried to find a local radio station to be like weather alerts and stuff, couldn't find anything. And we just sat and talked and it was so fun to just hang out with my boyfriend. Like we live together 24 seven, but we don't hang out very much because we're always like working or like, you know, but to just like sit and chat was like so cool. I ain't got time for trauma. I'm like, get back in the tent. <laughs> we're going, <laughs> we're going camping. <laughs> um, but then we go back out He's able to get signal down by the lake because we were like, what's like, is that just the front edge of it or is there going to be more? Um, and there was like a 45 minute window of it not being horribly stormy and windy because it's mostly the wind that like, you know, it was beating the tarp up and stuff. So we packed down. We were only camping for seven hours. By the way, we hiked eight miles during that time because it was loading the stuff from the car and that was only two trips, but it's a, a ways of the walk-in. Um, and then walking around the beach and stuff and having fun and then unloading it all again. It was an intense seven hours. Um, we're going to be, as soon as I get done chatting because I'm lonely, we're going to be working with polymer clay and I guess I could be working with it right now, but I'm going to keep chatting. Um, we ended up loading everything back into the car because there was another wave but gosh it was so terrifying but beautiful you guys we stood at the edge of the tree line and just watched all of this lightning this like red toned lightning from like the heat and the haze and it looked like in stranger things like there was a mind flare was about to come out of the mist and like the waves and every time it would light up it would it, like illuminate the bottom of the clouds across the lake and it was so scary and I couldn't breathe because of the grit like I was coughing from the grit so I had my buff on and Randy had put because we brought our firewood so we're like we're gonna have to burn it before we leave because of the emerald ash borers um and so we had like all of our wood on the fire and this beautiful like bonfire because Randy had put the funky flames in it so this like green blue and purple fire with the red lightning and then this very thin crescent moon setting uh just but all red and hazy oh it was and we saw the unicorn of missouri i am convinced a real live armadillo <laughs> we always see them dead on the road so we saw four like a whole family like a gaggle of armadillos i don't really know what a like a herd of armadillos I don't know. I don't know what you would call it, but, and they're so, they're so cute, you guys. I love armadillos. I want to, I want to non-invasively pet like an armadillo. Like, I don't know how bad it would upset an armadillo for me to pet it, but I really want to. <clears throat> oh, a pod, because they roll up. Are you serious, Kaslin? This is the most, Randy, they're called pods. Even if it's not official, it's official. They're pods of armadillos. Oh. Love says, I've never seen one. It's like, it's like if one day just like one of those pill bugs, the little potato roly polies, um, decided to be an animal <laughs> and bloop, now it's like a, it's like a possum and a pill bug had a little child. <laughs> so, but, um, but yeah, it was just, so we came home and we were exhausted. 
careful armadillos carry a whole bunch of armadillos. We did. And then there was one alive in the middle of the road. Um, an armada of armadillos. Gary, I love that. <laughs> there was one in the, alive in the middle of the road. He was still alive after we passed him. But he looked like he was like counting beans or something in the middle. This was last night, Kelly. <laughs> like we left immediately after yesterday's premiere. Um, and like we had everything else ready. I had gotten, it's a roll. Event! A roll of armadillos. You gotta be, no, this can't be true. That's too amazing. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, they carry leprosy. I'll be sure to, I don't know, <laughs> not get leprosy from an armadillo, I hope. But I mean, the odds of me catching one are so low. Um, so, but uh, catching an armadillo, not leprosy. Honestly, the odds of me catching an armadillo and then getting leprosy, that's probably exactly what would happen. But, um, <laughs> It was, it was a really great seven hours of being in the woods and it was amazing. And oh my God, air conditioning is so nice because it had gotten up to 105. Well, it was only like 94, but the web, the live channel, the weather channel said that it, it, it is 94 degrees. It feels like 105. And I was like, I believe that. So, <laughs> but yeah, so that's. That's what we've been up to, you guys. I'm gonna get the camera flipped around and we are going to get to crafting. So, yes, they are so stinking cute. Oh, there we go. Oh, and I also kinda wanna show you guys, this is how I have been, what did I do? What's happening? Give me a sec. Okay. Oh crap. There's just not enough room <laughs> on this table. This is how I have been keeping my pasta machine from getting straight up grody. You can see the layer of filth eek, on top of the box. <laughs> because, and that's been there for about a year. The box has. I haven't wiped it or dusted it in about a year. But... This is the box that my polymer clay, like my pasta machine came in. And so wherever I have it clamped, I just store that over it. And that has helped me so much in keeping this pasta machine looking nice and shiny. As opposed to, da -na -na, da -na -na. I don't know if y'all can see my shame. But that one was sitting on top of a shelf. It's broken. I blew out the gears. Like, one of the teeth of the gears fell off. Um, but that is, that was sitting on top of a bookcase. So I was like, I can fix the gears. I cannot fix the gears. Um, <laughs> but that's how stuff in my house starts to look if it doesn't get dusted on the daily. And we all know I'm not going to dust it on the daily. Hey, Martina. Okay, so now I am actually able to pay attention to comments and stuff. So if I missed y'all's previous comments, I'm so, so sorry. You lose your teeth, you get shelved, right? I mean, it literally had one job. <laughs> we really put it through its paces. Mmm. Oh, Cheryl, yes, so much for the wonderful gifts that you sent. It was just, um, gosh, the, uh, the burl wood that your husband used for the pen that y'all gave me was just amazing. Randy's pen is beautiful, too. He's using it already. But thank you guys so much. Anita says, my house is terribly dusty. Same. You are much more organized than my craft room. Oh, well, thanks, Howard. Years? Gears. <laughs> Come with those. Well, I'm glad to share them with you. It is my pleasure. So, I am going to be, we are working right now on our upcoming shop update. As well as some stuff. Ooh, I know I've shown this before. I'm actually, I'm going to try to get this whole disaster kind of tidied up. 
and do a polymer clay corner um, craft room tour, like just of this area. But this is how I keep and store my polymer clay. It's, I need to get more of these. There's like a dollar for three of them, but there's just, I need to get more and organize my clay a little bit more. Ah! Oh, I'm so glad you're happy with it, KJ. Would you, or do you have a video on your favorite polymer stuff? Um, I don't have a video for that. I probably could make one, but all of the, uh, tools that I use are linked in our curated toolkit. Um, that's on our website. And that's, for the most part, all my favorite stuff is there. But I'm constantly also always finding and learning about new stuff, too. Yeah, it's a dollar for three of them, I'm pretty sure it used to be. <laughs> I, I have to be careful to not quote pricing on stuff, because sometimes it'll be like, well, that's how much it was 15 years ago, last time I bought it. <laughs> so... Ooh, Sherry says, I need to make my dining room my craft room. I never use my craft studio upstairs. Ooh, right on. I've been having, okay, I haven't talked to Randy about this yet, but I've been having a deranged fantasy about turning the upstairs living room back into craft room and, like, just rearranging the entire house. And so I haven't, and I haven't, like, but I don't know. Hello. Yeah, I don't know if you can hear him. <laughs> we can talk about it later. No. no? Well, what about how we talked about turning, like, swapping the living room and the bedroom? That's some time to do so now. What? Nee! <laughs> well, we'll talk more about it off camera where I can cry openly <laughs> and beg shamelessly. <laughs> so, the way that I get... What is it? Oh, that's my water bottle. I don't know. I just... Oh, so much of everywhere we've ever lived, except for our apartments, we kind of, I'm just feeding the slices through the pasta machine. Well, it's not so much bored with the furniture layout, but it's, I've always um, kind of, things evolved. Sorry, let me get it flipped around, because I want you guys to be able to see what's going on. But, um, what's happening? Oh, there's a thing in the way. What even is that? Like, everything's always evolved and grown. And so it's not so much that I'm displeased with the furniture layout. It's that things that used to serve a purpose now are just kind of sitting there. But what we do with our business has changed. And so it's kind of, you know, uh, as every season... In the garden, we add things and we remove things to suit as we're changing. And I think that's periodically that needs done with our business as well. Because um, used to, we were gone so much, we didn't even have a living room. And now that we're actually home more, we work so much that we don't even use our living room. Um, and then we started, Maddie was here and she started enforcing some company mandated uh, like breaks and stuff so uh now that we're using the living room more we're finding the couch which is like a, a walmart futon is horribly horribly uncomfortable but i don't know how we'd ever be able to get like an actual couch up there so we're looking into maybe how to actually make a couch um but lumber costs you know it's weight in gold so so we're not gonna do anything <laughs> we're i'm just gonna complain about it but it just, you know, other than our apartments, we've always kind of lived in somebody else's space or just thing, had things be how they had to be and not maybe how we would like to have them be. And, uh, I don't know, kind of just exploring that concept. So what I'm working on right now is going to be in our next shop update as well as our upcoming craft along kits. Uh, if I can get enough of them made. They will be in not August's craft along kits, but September's. Because for August, we're adding um, Labradorite gemstone cabochons to our uh, jumbo craft along kits. 
And next month, I'd like to maybe see about having some polymer clay and resin, crescent moons, and different stuff. Like, I kind of want to make some steampunk crescent moons today. I think it would be pretty neat, y'all. We could pro pool. <laughs> yeah, well, we have the living room upstairs, and it's, I don't know. I, I was on Pinterest and sowed the seeds of discontent into myself. <laughs> and uh, we'll get it figured out. I don't know if I want to do gears because whenever I do the gear imprints, um, <gasps> I know how we're gonna do it. Okay, we'll do a couple of different things. We've got a whole two at minimum two hour slot time <laughs> time slot to fill. So, and I just wanted to get I, I have the camera zoomed out like this so that you guys can see exactly how it is I'm going about conditioning my clay. Deborah says, how can I sign up for the craft along kits? Um, you can go to our website, backtoearthcreations.com, and there is a tab that says join our club, and you can click on that, and we actually have videos embedded on all of the pages um, to do with our craft along club to kind of help you along with um, kind of explaining what benefits are and what you know factors you might want to take into consideration if you're international or anything like that so and if you have any questions you can always email us at backtoearthcreations at yahoo.com and we'll try our best to be helpful to you if i won the lottery today you know because nobody asked i would buy one of those lucy um <laughs> like elephant um model pasta machines like before buying a new house or anything <laughs> I would get a new pasta machine and it would be one of those okay Ooh, do you ever use embossing folders to impress your clay um ah thanks Michelle <laughs> Um, I have not used the embossing folders in a long time because it, you, mm, just the way that I, I certainly don't pass it through a machine, but I, I've been in Lucy the Elephant's butt. Oh, Yvette. <laughs> oh, Yvette, I have missed you. <laughs> Yeah, it's going to be pixelated, you guys. It's the very nature of our live streams. It's why we had stopped doing them for a while. Um, <laughs> but it's especially bad any time that I, like, move the phone or anything like that. Because that's what I'm streaming from. Um, But yeah, with the embossing folders, I, I wouldn't pass it through the embossing machine um, because I've found that it, that kind of puts too much pressure onto the clay. What I would do is I would spritz it with water and then put it on there and like put a roller over it or press it or, you know, something along those lines. We had one storm that left a river in my street. We still want rain. We are dry, right? Yeah, it's, uh, we passed actually some, like, uh, I don't know if they were intentional or what, but some fields were on fire on the way to camping. Yeah. Yeah, those, those they are. <laughs> and that's why, that, that's a lottery dream. Like, I'm not even realistically saving up for one. It's such a frivolous, uh, luxurious splurge <laughs> um 
Where is, if I wear the stuff that I'm supposed to be using and having and everything, um, I would totally use the heck out of some razor paper right now. I'm gonna go grab it, I'll be right back. Also, you guys, we are having a giveaway today. If you want to leave a comment on our most recent shop update, we're actually... Hey, babe. Can you, uh, you'll need this information as We did not do a shop update or a giveaway last week's live stream. So it'll be, we'll be doing one giveaway from this past shop update and one from the one before it. Does that make sense? So yep. Because I missed last week's. So if you guys want, here in a minute, Randy's going to be, I think, sharing the links to um, the shop update video tours where you can leave a comment and that will put your name in the hat for today's giveaways. I'm so covered in cat fur. It's ridiculous. Yeah, no, uh, no international, like, in the EU, because we don't have one of those. I haven't figured out the VAT stuff. And it's, like, $25 to ship at the moment. Okay, so here I'm using the shiny side of some freezer paper. And this is going to be nice and, uh, I nice and hydrophobic and that way we can do some stuff to it okay I gotta go grab uh, water Okay, I am back. It does look like there are some clouds on the horizon. So this is a continuous spray uh, mister from like Tandy Leather. And I'm just coming through. Putting a little bit of water there on the surface. Uh, thank you, Randy. Okay, and this one I'm just going to be painting. And we are using, it's Halo. I'm sorry, Randy. The conversation we were having earlier today, yeah. it's not hollow, it's Halo. That was my mistake. It's Halo blue gold and Halo, Halo violet gold. Okay. 
Okay. Wow, these are so... <laughs> so some of these don't have a whole lot going on in them anymore. So let's see. That one is completely yep, dried up. This one's still good, though. Let's see if there's anything in this one. Nope. Okay. Well, dang it. And, oh, that one's still bad. That one's still good. Okay. So. Keeping the lids about them. Where's that other one? Here we are. Ooh, a brand new bottle. Ooh, just pull the lid right off of that. Is it? No! No! Okay, it's good. <laughs> it's just, it's kind of dry. It's kind of solid in there. But I was able to stick the, <laughs> the paintbrush in it. No problem. I know, right, Martina? I love our craft alongs. It's um the social aspect a little bit of getting the craft together without us having to actually leave our craft rooms or put real pants on. It's fantastic. So we have our entire craft room at our fingertips with none of the inconvenient going outside and humaning, humaning stuff. So I'm going to start with... The Halo Blue Gold, because it's my favorite. And I'm just going to come through and go like this. It's my favorite. And it gets some cool separations and stuff, too. Uh-oh. Hey, Boogie. Could you bring me a cup of white water? Okay, for cleaning out my brush. I don't know if I can wait just a bit. Um... <laughs> there's a crafter there's a way so I'm just using the spray water that's actually really pretty like I don't know if y'all can see how it like drips and it's just beautiful do not underestimate the powers of my laziness <laughs> and the extent to which I will go to not have to get back up and go to the other room. Okay, so I'm going to make all of my scientist friends cringe really, really stinking hard and just stick a dirty brush into a paint pot. But this is basically what I do with these paints exclusively. So... Now... Oftentimes I'll go through and do a little bit of texture and stuff first, but I want to make a really nice, like, clean resin cast out of this. So, I just want... What's going on here? So using some of this really pretty blue water <laughs> that we now have off to the side... I'm just going to come through, and you'll see we'll start to get a little bit of, like, uh, running because my table is not level. And we'll use this color on another one. But I just wanted to do a green and purple because I'm not going to lie to you, it is my favorite. Put all the caps back on. What'd you Can do? outside for a reason. Um, she not rang the bell, so I let her out. Would you bring her in? Because it looks like it's going to get ugly. Well, she could come inside and be asleep. Thank you, honey. So, I'm going to try to let it do its own thing. I don't know. Let's see. <laughs> you heard this little... Yes! These are the Lumiere Halo paints. And I'm just going to kind of go in. Oh. Put all your hair on. 
kissy, give me kisses. <gasps> I love you. Ow, that's my eyeball. No, oh, no, okay. <laughs> really? She's just totally comfortable with stuff like this. Well, yeah. <laughs> she is cat. She on, she and physics that aren't on talking terms. Get on dumb thing. Okay, so I absolutely love this disaster that's going on. You watching the dogs poop in the yard again? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Don't start barking. <laughs> And also, if you guys are, like, super into upcycling, you can use the water from this stuff. It has that, like, pigmented, like, let's just chill out. No, we're, we're going to try to keep her in because of the weather, babe. No, that might be pro. You don't know. The day is young. Is that not just the prettiest? I kind of want to just get, like, I feel like I could make a whole... Yeah, if there's a big oily spot on the front door, there is. that's from my face. I had put sunblock on, and then Izzy was here, and so I smushed my face against the door. And that's that's what's going on there with that. <laughs> but I feel like I could make an entire channel of just like slow motion, swirly craft stuff happening. Okay, so now we're going to be having a little bit of like water running and different things like that. And we can come through and use our mister. And just wherever it is that the paint is a little thick. And you could have just left it however it was. Because this is going to make things significantly muddier. But I'm all about that. And I really want it to lift the pigment out of the um, pearlescent And so we can kind of just shift things around. But I really don't want this. Hey, Lisa, I'm making a paint sheet for that I'm going to be cutting like shapes and stuff out of. We can also just turn it around and maybe use the slope of the table to slowly get things to move in another direction. I also think it might be really, really cool if we had like some rock salt or something to like you know, like how in watercolor, because it might wick up the moisture. Um, maybe. But yeah, so we can get some really cool, like, little run lines. I don't have any... Oh, I wonder what this would be like if we used the... Um... Oh... It's that flow medium that you can put in acrylic paint that makes it break into cells. Because if we could have that separating, that would be really neat. But I don't know how that bakes. Hey, Randy. You want to come look at this? <laughs> right on. Mm -hmm. It's been a long time since I've made one of these messes, huh? Mm -hmm. So that's what you were talking about. Wouldn't that be cool? No. Like, yeah, I tried to do my nails in, like, Halo, and it just didn't work. It's not the same. Yeah. No, not that stuff. That's hollow. This is the Lumiere paints. But I kind of want to do an acrylic pour of... Oh, there you can see it. Is that busted out of there? Maybe, yeah. Oh, that another one somewhere. But, um... We're thinking about making our own, because everything's so darn expensive, um, that we're like, well, we'll just make our own kitchen island, blackjack, and... Fuckers. <laughs> yeah. Um, Forget the blackjack. Yeah. But uh, we were thinking countertops are very expensive, so we're like, well, maybe we'll do a cast epoxy one. Ooh, we tried to make some dice and had, like, some hollow stuff. And we made it to where it can swirl. But I thought, 
I was trying to talk, like convey the idea to Randy, and I was talking about this, and he thought I was talking about, like, holographic, like how we did on like some of our moons, where it's like looks like the back of a CD, kind of. Ooh, yeah, quite possibly, Kelly. And so we can come in and get a little bit more of a stir going. Hmm, I need to figure out where I can set this. That it's not directly in my, like, right. I need it to not be right here. Okay. So I have a clipboard. And I'm just going to transfer it real quick onto the clipboard. And I'm going to set this off to the side on maybe something level. If I can find it. I don't know if that actually exists in this house. But we shall see. Because if it's not level, it just starts kind of dripping. So I'm going to prop, I'm going to use the glue to prop it up. <laughs> Y'all check this out. So I have it sitting right there. And it's got a little thing of glue underneath it to prop it up. <laughs> but it's fine over there. We can just let it sit for a bit while we work on the steampunk. Hmm, yes. Bye, May. Hi. Can you put the paint onto those press on nails and put them over your existing ones? Ooh, yeah. Except I use my nails so much as a tool that, like, the press on ones, I don't like how it feels and then pops off. Um, so that's just me, though. But to get the look, that's a really great way of doing it. But I kind of want it. Ooh, a concrete island. That would be neat. Ooh, cooking oil. Really? To make it, like, separate and do the cell thing? How about use a piece of paper and put it on the surface to do a print? Oh my gosh. Hey, Carol. This is nice to see you doing polymer clay again. Yeah, for real. <laughs> Leveling your surface. Care of, care of random objects, indeed. So, what I'm going to do here is we're going to condition up. I need to be careful to not do that. Polymer clay will melt and fuse to some plastics, so be careful. <laughs> but we're going to condition up some more clay. I'm going to go with black because that's what I have directly in front of me. Be sure to go and leave a comment on our shop update uh, videos that Randy linked a little while ago uh, because we're going to be doing our giveaway in about 12 minutes. Woo! Oh gosh, Stephanie, she says it's the first time I ever used pressed on nails. Oh, okay. Uh, she says, first time I ever used pressed on nails, I was in high school and we went bowling, and every time I bowled, a nail would pop off and go clicking down the alley. Oh, no. <laughs> ah! <laughs> hey, Darla. Uh, that was just water, Christine. Alcohol would have worked really well, too, and it actually would dry a lot faster. Um, but I'm using what I got, and I don't have any rubbing alcohol. So I am just passing my clay through the machine. <laughs> Polymer clay is... I, I've never been actually diagnosed with ADHD. <clears throat> but I can empathize with a lot of the stuff that I hear about and read about. And, you know, talk to friends about who have been diagnosed with ADHD. And I'm like, wow, that sounds very familiar. But working with polymer clay is my f one of my favorite things to hyper focus on because it's engaging so many different parts of my brain uh and it's so like involved and it, like even the waiting is like ooh I can watch it dry or you know something so it's I hope y'all are enjoying playing with polymer clay with me There we go um, do you know if you can use, use Lumiere paints in resin? 
KJ says, yes, you can. You just have to mix it well. Um, it, I'm going to say it depends on the resin. I don't think I have any directly here on hand. Um, but I had used it in this stuff, actually. And it, like, I don't, ooh, it's still sticky. Um, it, it like, became, like, lava rock. Oh, hey, Abigail, how's it going? <laughs> ah, the paint sheet to your nails and cover with a gel top coat to seal it. Oh, I love that idea, Karma. Hey, Anita. And yesterday I sold a wire rock for a Jasper to a friend. Ah! Congratulations! <laughs> Not gonna lie, in today's age, any way that we can help people support a side hustle just makes me so happy. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to fold this. But I kind of wanted to try something different today with my nails because I am wearing one of my favorite <gasps> chicken shirts. Mock, mock. <laughs> and I don't know, it kind of matched the holographic silver, kind of matched the, uh, the chicken. <laughs> I should paint my chickens as toenails to match, but I don't think, I literally don't think they'll stand for it. <laughs> Thank you also to everybody who uh, purchased a shirt through our, um, like the super durable shirts. Uh, they closed yesterday. Um, <laughs> pay to watch that, right? Do it pay-per-view. Um, we closed the pre-orders for our super durable shirts yesterday. They will start printing and getting shipped out um, August 20th at soonest. So I'm very, very excited about that. But thank you so much to all y'all. I think we sold 16 shirts total. So that's pretty cool for the first merch run that we've had like ever of t-shirts. So <laughs> like I'm excited to um, bring in another we're already talking with our friends at World of Strange. Is this a hair or the imprint of a hair? Cannot tell. An actual hair. Okay. But uh, we're going to be working with our friends World of Strange again on another merch line of like, we're thinking some pretty cool like bags that are specifically designed for all of our crafty goodies. So it would be like a crafting on the go bag. Oh no, Pinky! <laughs> oh, hey Bella Ann, thanks for popping in. Currently working on some beaded jewelry orders, thanks to all. Side hustle to help, help pay for my wedding in May. Oh, well congratulations on your wedding, Abigail. Daniel says a crafting bag would be fabulous. Right on. Can't hear side hustle without the 70s disco team starting in my head. Noise. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, so now we are going to be doing a technique that's going to be using, we're going to do like some stamping and texturing and stuff, and then mica pigments. So let's try to make sure that the camera stays focused, and let's rummage about and try to find like the coolest steampunky crap we can. Hmm. <clears throat> Looking, looking, looking. Ooh, I can show you guys over here. Roll on over. And let's see, we've got some super cute little stamps here. Yeah, this is a whole little bin that I'm going to take with me. We've got that. And we've got these 3D stamps over here that I really like. Yep, yep, yep. Ooh, I like this one for some texture. That should be a decent start. Ooh. Okay, and then we also have these stamps. Okay, I think that'll do us. It's a decent start at least. Absolutely love those drawers. 
can see they're super dusty, but they keep the dust out, which is amazing. So, just because I've grabbed a bunch of stuff doesn't mean, yeah, sorry. I keep moving the camera like I'm recording, and I keep forgetting that I'm in a live stream. So, it's going to be a little bit of a disaster. What can I have this on that isn't going to be... Okay, I gotta go grab some more, um, what's it? Freezer paper. I'll be right back. Oh, wait, actually, maybe I could use this. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna use this. So this is just a page protector <laughs> that I had on the shelf next to me. I, I laid it dusty side down, so that should work. I'm going to go like this. I'm going to go like that with just some water. And I'm going to take... And I'm just pressing in to get some textures. I don't even know what this thing is. I think, like, it was from... I think I took... Randy and I are taking computers apart. Doesn't that just look neat? A really nice texture for the background doing some deeper there we go and now I'm gonna use this one which it's starting to feel a little stiff I don't want to be too rough on it and I'm just gonna take it and press oh yeah that gets some nice steampunk looking stuff so oh it's a heat sink okay is that like for electronics? That sounds like an electronics thing. Oh yeah. Okay, so I don't know if y'all can see that because of the lighting, but there you can see nice little imprint. And this was actually part of, it was all like one big stamp sheet and I didn't want all the other crap. So I just kind of cut it out. And so I'm just going to stamp, 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 stamp. And this is something that I do like if we had a thicker, not thicker, um, stiffer clay, I think I'd have some problems with getting, you know, a nice embossed texture. Ooh, and then we can take, now we have this one, or we could use, but they're slightly different, so let's use both. Mmm, it allows the air to circulate and remove heat. Science! So I'm going to take this. And the reason we have the water on here is that's making a little barrier to keep stuff, in theory, from sticking to our clay. So. Oh yeah, that looks pretty cool, y'all. So, and I'm doing just... A hodgepodge, modgepod mess. Just a mess, y'all, of a whole bunch of little, like, textures and all sorts of stuff. Like, you can actually take, like, a screw, like this one here, and roll it. Again, just getting textures. You can get ahead of it and smush it to get little indentations and stuff. Um... You can take pieces like this one here and do like this roller thing where you're just getting little textures like that. We have, these are actually leather working stamps that sometimes I'll come over here and grab them and use them for actual leather working, but um, I actually ended up buying a separate set just for polymer clay. Um, and you can see it doesn't take a whole lot of pressure, but you just come in and smush, but yeah, I really don't want it to stick, so go 
And we can do, I really like this one because it just cuts a line. So get a lot of patterns and beat the snot out of the clay with it. Yes. Now this is, in leather working, this is the hefty foot for pressing with stamps. And I really, really, really like this one because we can position it. And then it allows us to press evenly. Oh, you gotta be careful though. <laughs> and it just presses right into the stuff. And it's it's got a lot of weight to it, so I always kind of overkill it. Um, and we can just come through with different sized gears. I'm being very non engineery and generic with how I'm having these. Oh, I'm gonna do this one next. Um, interact with each other because the whenever we end up cutting this out um, it won't be nearly so obvious I think so I'm gonna set that one there um, ooh, I love that I love it <laughs> and I'd love to be able to figure out a way if I could like mount this to maybe like a resin back just so it would have a handle to it. Actually, it's not a bad idea. I could use epoxy sculpt and then just have that be yield. Okay. We could probably do that with stuff like these as well where we could take it and press it and I'm just going to use the back side of this handle. To do that but now I have to figure out how in the heck I'm gonna <laughs> pull it up off of the uh, clay without too much distortion and the water again really really helps now something that we can do if I can find it I have a screwdriver over here somewhere I thought but um I like to do like a little like the end of a, a pen or something and make like a little circle and use a screwdriver like a Phillips head and just doop, right there and it'll make it look like um, an actual screw or bolt were there. Um, Danielle, I'm going to be cutting these into cabochons and then capping them in resin and using them in wire wrapping. They're going to be going into our shop update. They're going to be going into our craft along kits. So I kind of want to go through and try this one. All right, babe. In the middle of that texture, just to see, ooh, just to see what happens. <laughs> I keep using that one a bunch. I want to try using this one now. Now we will be getting a little bit of like distortion and stuff as this happens. But that's okay. I'm gonna use the medium one. So now you can kind of see how this is coming along. And you can make your little gears interlock with each other if you like, or you can have it make as much or as little sense as you want. Finding any empty spots that are like, oh, I think I could use a little something, something. There's one. There's two. There's three. This is kind of something different, but I'm going to be cutting and making them all into cabs, um, cabochons for hopefully y'all to use in your own work. If you're in our craft along club, or if you're, um, you know, if you like purchasing from our shop updates. I'm going to do 
one more little just gear right in the middle there. Okay, so now we can come through And I'm going to try to block this. And now I'm going to come in and just burnish across the surface. And it won't be perfect, but it doesn't have to be perfect. And we're just catching the higher up details. And I'm going to be a little splotchy with this and then come in with maybe a copper. Yeah, I'm going to do this in copper and this is sunset gold. <clears throat> so I'm just coming now I don't want to come in with a bunch of loose pigment like how I have on my finger here and you could always use like a sponge or something but if we drop loose pigment into the crevices I don't think it gives as cool of an effect or at least not what I'm going for it may give a super cool effect it's just it's all about what we're shooting for coming through like that. Okay, I'm going to close that up. And then, what's this? Ooh, some silver. Let's use that. And I'm just kind of filling in because I want to cover all of the black. That way any black that has um, that is there is going to be the low points, like the kind of shadows of the piece. And see if it gets water involved with it, then the mica pigment just doesn't bind as well. Now you can also just pat. And that seems to give some pretty cool results. I'm going to do a little bit more. But I do like burnishing it in. Burnishing that pigment in. Okay, so now, ooh, I actually have some nail art powder that I think would look wicked cool here in this like really intense orange. Let's see how that does. And if anything, we can always try it just here along an edge. Oh yeah, that's vibrant. I love it. Oh my goodness, <laughs> so fiery. And so you can really, I mean, go with whatever color scheme that you want. And this doesn't have to be steampunk. It, the same concept of using um, stamps and clay and pigments, you could make this very themed. You could make it very... Um, like Art Nouveau, you could have your own stamps that you've carved and incorporate that into your work. You could have it be very um, floral. <laughs> well, hey, Deborah, well, thank you. Okay, well, I was just going to stick to regular colors, but y'all look at this blue. Um, it's amazing. So I'm going to use that. 
and we could go nautical with like um nautical steampunk with like oh my with octopi octopuses i guess and the nice thing about this is we can try a color just over in one segment. The whole piece doesn't have to be cohesive and look like it was designed to fit together. Um, you could try a splash of color just over on one side. I'm really loving this nail art powder, you guys. It's a really intensely pretty blue. <laughs> What other? Oh, that one first. That's horrible. Ooh, here's a really bright, like, yellowy gold. Note to self, do not open powders over your project. Just in case. But yeah, we can just come in there and shine it in a little bit more. Rachel, which, which tutorial were you looking for? I'm gonna do a little bit more. I don't know, I need something in the middle. Where's that? There it is. Super bright, pretty copper color. Yeah, let's see if I can't find a silver in this, because this it was like seven bucks or something for the whole pack of all of these different nail art colors. I think I'm going to start recommending these to folks instead of the Prolex pigments. Possibly. We'll see how they bake and stuff. I don't want to get ahead of myself. Oh, wow, that's so vibrant. And you may not want something this vibrant. But that is like chrome, y'all. That is so cool. Okay, so we could take this and um, cut it into shapes and then bake it and then dome that in resin. And I think I'm going to do that with like half of this. And then the other half I want to put through and stretch. So let me take a moment and tidy up. Just because limited workspace somehow. I'd have brought the camera with me, but it just messes up the camera, so. But I put all my toys back where I got them. My father would be so proud, because <laughs> that was something I was incapable of doing as a child. And I'm still, for the most part, incapable of doing as an adult. So now I'm going to cut it just right down the middle. And this is going to be the side that I cut into cabs. This is going to be the side that I pass through the pasta machine. So I don't know if I can turn the camera. Yeah, I can. It's going to get a little weird real quick. So now it was on the thickest setting. I'm going to put it on setting number two. So just slightly thinner. And I am just going to feed it through in one direction. 
and then I'm turning it to setting number three and then I'm going to feed it through in the other direction. You'll check that out. So now we have the texture and we have the steampunk design but without so much of the level change. Like you can see that's pretty smooth when compared to This is it before we rolled it, this is it after. So it's a very, very different look, but whenever we go through to cast our resin, we're not gonna have to worry about, here on the piece on the right, we're not gonna have to worry about resin running off. Pardon the camera farts as I tighten the tripod. We're not going to have to worry about the resin running off of this. This is also fantastic. Just, I mean, it, oh no, don't touch it, Vaughn. Ah, why'd I done this? Um, <laughs> yeah, don't drag your finger across it. It's not baked and sealed. Um, yeah, it makes it like fabric, like it's flat. It's stretched and distorted some of the design. It gave us like, I mean, that's just the fact that with the same tools, materials, and basic technique, you can take it one step further and make it completely like those are two very different things that we got going on right there and this is also where i almost could have done the design more dense and then so that whenever we had it stretched there wouldn't be as much empty space like something that doesn't look like a huge empty space right here once stretched and also this gives you i think a really good idea of the size difference so I'll actually be able to cut significantly more cabs out of this one and I think this is the one that I'm going to make steampunk moons out of so let's see how that oh we have not done the giveaway yet so let's go do the giveaway are you ready Randy okay so you guys have not yet left a comment better go do that real quick um yeah let's go do the giveaway winners -na 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 -na. Oops. <laughs> I'm so sorry that it's super pixelated that's just kind of how this goes so we are here in the <laughs> hello so are we doing it over here or on your computer do you have it ready over there kind of yeah, Randy already has it ready at his computer, so I'm gonna... Yes, we are going to start with the video from August 2nd, where in that one we are giving away um, cabs. It's a, a craft kit with cabs. Okay. Yeah. You ready? Yep. Ready or not, here we go. We got 103 pounds. Ooh, wee. I have nothing to do with him on this. You ready? He's clicking. Woo, Joe Pie. <laughs> Congratulations, Joe Pie. Uh, it says, Labradorite is my absolute favorite. I see your nail polish looks like Labradorite. Also, your jewelry creations are inspiring. Oh, thank you for your tutorials. Well, it thank you. It was intentional. It was. Well, oh, <laughs> yeah, I really. It was. What color was it? Gazing pool or something? Amethyst smoke was the color of nail polish that I had been wearing. Um, but yeah, congratulations, Joe Pye. If you could send us an email to backtoearthcreations at yahoo.com with where you would like for us to ship that to. Um, unfortunately, we are not able currently to be shipping <coughs> excuse me, our giveaways internationally. Oh, it's just too expensive, and then they basically never arrive. So, which is frustrating for everyone involved um but yeah <laughs> uh so now our the viewer. second giveaway for today is from the august 6th no what was monday august let's just look at the, the ninth. the ninth we were gonna get there um <laughs> Um, the August 9th shop update where we are giving away a quartz crystal and a little crystal grid. Um, 
So good luck. Ooh. Much better odds. Uh, you leave comments on our Monday shop updates. Those are where we pull the giveaway winners from. Ready? <laughs> yes. You got the room? What's going on? No, uh, I have, I've been talking nonstop for about an hour and 20 minutes oh, okay. and have drunk like two sips of coffee. Great house with me. You get a rock and a little wood thing. So, have a birthday. The pressure of trying to come up with a comment. No. no. Well, you're a winner, winner, chicken dinner. That's Congrats. good enough. <laughs> That's good enough. Um, so, if you could leave a... Send us an email, Gary. Because, oh, look at my cat. Meow. Um, we probably have your shipping info, Gary. I'm not going to lie. but yeah, I think we just sent them well, uh, just send me an email anyways. That way we can email you back with your tracking info. Um, <clears throat> man, it is looking. Y'all want to see if we can spot any hummingbirds today? That would have been too good a timing if there was actually a hummingbird there. Where's the... Oh! <laughs> yeah, it's starting to look like rain. That'd be cool. The garden would like that. Same love. There we go. Okay. And for the sake of things not being completely pixelated, that's probably going to be the last time I move my camera for a while. So, we are going to be going through, and I guess I'll bake them on here. But we're going to be cutting calves and ooh, coffee <sighs> right on Gary he's like I know the drill <laughs> y'all are just the greatest I hope you know I kind of want to make some little moons but maybe I should just make some big moons I'm gonna make them with this size cutter which is like an inch and three quarters maybe maybe millimeters would be more accurate no I don't know yeah, it's that big. Good luck. Um, but yeah, uh, I got these in a kit of like a bunch of cookie cutters. So take that however you will. So I'm going to start by doing a round. And I want to capture just a little bit right there. I really like these cutters because they have that rounded top edge. There we go. And now we can, oh, I should have, oh no, I think you'll go live on TikTok in the future. I'd love to share live with you. We can craft together. I have no idea how that works. Like, I have a TikTok, but do not confuse that for me knowing what I'm doing on TikTok, um, because those are two very different things. I've peeled this up, and I'm just going to eh, get a little bit of water on there. That way, we don't get as much sticking. But, like, what's a TikTok live? I'm not saying no, I just don't know what it is. <laughs> so now to do crescent moons, I'm just going to come in. Oh, gosh. I'm going to have to put my head in the way for just a minute so I can see what's happening. That's not working. Okay. Um, no one knows what they're doing on TikTok. Quite possibly. We're all just kind of faking it till we make it. Okay, so I've cut. Coming forward. Now this is significantly thinner. And it's distorting on me. And so we've got a nice little crescent moon there. <clears throat> but we may be able to kind of need something maybe bigger or smaller I don't know let's keep trying let's see what happens 
Maybe if I try to peel it from the back, it won't distort on me as much. But yeah, since we're using a thinner clay than what I typically use, I typically use it on the thickest. Now that shouldn't matter as much once we dome it with resin. We'll have a really nice little thin moon. And uh, you can see I'm just laying it out on our tray here to put into the oven. But I don't want that distortion happening. So we'll kind of play it by ear and figure it out. <laughs> Seaglass Diary says, I just signed up to TikTok after pressure for my grandchildren. Yeah, it's... It took Maddie being like, Vaughn, you've got to do this. If you have a business, you have to do this. And oh, my business friends were like, yeah, too. But it wasn't until I had Maddie in the house ha hassling me about it. And she wasn't hassling. She was just encouraging. She was like, that would be a great TikTok. And I'm like, uh, what? <laughs> so I'm just going to go through and do, oh, we don't have to do just that shape. And as a reminder, we will be posting these into our shop update on Monday. So if you guys would like to be the first to know about that, well, our Craft Along Club will be the first first to know about it. And that's our $1 and up subscribers. But, um, who we could do a steampunk kitty. Who wants a steampunk kitty? Ooh, that's a good idea, Danielle. I don't have a spatula, but if I did, that's a really good idea. Meow. There's that, and then, ooh, I want to do some teardrops. Oh, that's a super fat build teardrop. I'm going to use that one. <laughs> yeah, you can tell which ones are my favorite because they've got, like, goo lines <laughs> from where I was cutting through the paint. Ooh. I'm going to plug my phone in so it doesn't die. <clears throat> Excuse me, not the Rona, just, just coughing. There we go. Oh, I think I'm going to love that. Nice little steampunk kitty. Mmm, <laughs> the tissue blade, that is a good idea. <clears throat> I do really like the teardrops because you can get in some like interesting corners and stuff. Like, that's so cool. I can't wait to see these baked. But yeah, um, sign up for our newsletter, which is free, at factorycreations.com. And other than our Craft Along Club members, you will be the first to know that we have a shop update. And you also get exclusive coupons. Our Craft Along Club members, and that's whether you're a $1 or a $20 or what, uh, you'll get a 20% off coupon. And then we send out a 15% off coupon in our newsletters. And then if you aren't signed up or if you missed out or you want to use a coupon, you can use Happy Crafter and that gets you 10% off of your order. Like, that's so neat. <laughs> I think I may do this again, but mm, with a different, like, maybe layering, build it, laying, layering plain clay behind it to build it back up to full thickness. Like, that one looks really cool. I love that. The way that the gear is on that one. So cool. And on some of these, on the cutters, after it's been baked, I'll actually come through and sand that side down. <coughs> You'd have to start asking people to follow you on TikTok. You need 1,000 followers before you can go live. I've seen many people gain hella followers. Oh, wow. Right on.
So we're going to have an auction again. Um, I don't know. We're not against it. We're just, I feel really bad, um, in, not to get dark or anything, but there's a lot of people who are like, you know, financially hard up and like, whenever things get tight around here and I know we should be having an auction you know in like hustling and pushing sales and stuff it's I don't want to be for some reason that's whenever I'm like least enthusiastic about um hustling and so it I don't know if we'll be doing an auction because I want people to be able to get our stuff for as little as possible because I know that being tight on money sucks and uh I want y'all to be able to get as absolute much as you can for every single dollar. So we'll still be doing shop updates. That one came out really good. I just stock baristas. <laughs> what? Thank you. And I have that pertains to say thank you so much for all your videos because you're the first one I watched to see how to make jewelry and I'm 15 months in. Ah! Right on, sea glass. Well, I'm really glad to be helpful to you. Like, that's kind of the whole reason why I do any of this stuff is I want to be helpful because when we were starting our business, the, like, YouTube was around for, like, three years. Whenever we started, we went you know, professional. So there wasn't a whole lot of tutorials out there. So we had to learn the hard and expensive way on a lot of this stuff through just trial and error and a lot of um, disastrous experimentation, and, you know, just all sorts of stuff. So I've been really, really glad to be able to just, even if I can be just a little helpful. Because again, you guys have probably heard it before, but whenever we started our business, we were in such a small town, there were no other financial options, you know, for like getting a job other than like working at Walmart or the factory, which Walmart at the time was hiring for like six bucks an hour and the factory hired at 12, but they did seasonal layoffs. Um, so you're only in work for like half the year. Um, so that sucked. Um, and the truck that we had, cause it was like, we lived in Podunk, like Elora, Tennessee. <laughs> it was like 45 minutes to the nearest, like t anywhere to be employed. So we had moved into Fayetteville, um, because apartments were cheap enough for us to be able to afford. And there just wasn't anywhere to work. And it was 45 minutes to the next town and our truck couldn't make it. So... We turned to uh, crafting. You know, I was kind of crafting anyways because it's fun and it's amazing and I love it. Um, but Randy's dad actually suggested, he was like, well, why don't you guys sell some of your stuff at the art center? Because they have like the host of Christmas past uh, every November, which was like the town's little Christmas festival. Um, and so we paid like the 30 bucks to join the art league and, uh, cause art league members got a table space for free. So we had like a six foot table with some pretty jank looking, <laughs> like uh, we, we were babies. It wasn't jank. It was just, we were babies. Um, like our very first displays and some of our earliest jewelry, but we made, and I'm going to be candid with you guys, we made like $500 over like three days of selling, which was more than what Randy and I were making on our two week checks of working full time. Um, and then the shop that I worked at like a few months later closed down. So I was out of work and it was just, I don't, stuff was hard, y'all. Like it was hard. We all get to pick our hard, but it's, you know, there were not a lot of opportunities and it seemed like at every every turn was something that was just like extraneous that was making things more difficult than they could have been if it hadn't have been that way <laughs> um so this is this is polymer clay we are using sculpey uh primo brand polymer clay 
and I'm just folding up my scrap clay. Oh, I appreciate you so much, Kelly. And you definitely, for sure, keep a lot of our lights turned on. So, you literally light up my life. <laughs> um, what happens if you squish the scraps together and flatten it? Ooh, yeah. Well, let's see. Because I could have taken the scrap pieces and laid them on some other clay and stretched the designs even further. I really like those. I'm gonna have I'm gonna set this tile off to the side so that I don't accidentally set my elbow on it. And then we can do a bit more clay clay. Okay. okay. Right on, Pinky. Yeah. And it was um Randy was still working full time and uh I was going to school online and started trying to make the business work because it really gave us hope to do that craft show and like that paid for our bills for the month and we were like holy sh <laughs> um it was, it was just amazing um and so we started doing more craft shows but randy would ask for the time off from work and his manager would be like yeah yeah you, we've got you we've got you on this you know and so we'd go We'd go a ahead and pay for, I don't know, it didn't really do as much streaking and stuff as I thought it would. We'd go ahead and pay for the booth fees for these, like, craft shows. And then, you know, it, it, the schedule would come up, and it'd be, like, a week out from the craft show, and Randy would be on the schedule. And his boss would be like, no, you have to work, you're on the schedule. And so it, we'd, <laughs> we had to do some bending over backwards to... Like, we had the one vehicle, and so Randy would go and drop me off at the craft shows. Uh, sometimes, you know, like, we'd drive, he'd 45 minutes to drop me off at the craft show to go back home. Because fortunately, we were able to buy, um, unfortunately, uh, one of the family members passed away. But we were able to buy their car, uh, like, just pay whatever else was owed on it to the bank. And they were like, yeah, it's yours. Um... And so we were able to get a decent car, but again, it's like, you know, we, we were lucky. I don't know how much, like, all of everything. We were so lucky. Now, we were working hard, but luck was there, and I'll take it where I can get it, I'm just going to say. Um, but he'd drive 45 minutes, drop me, me in the booth off, go to work all day. I'd be setting up the booth and, um, you know, selling all day. Uh, if it was local enough, he'd be able to come, like, during his lunch break and bring me some food and let me go to the bathroom. But I was manning the booth by myself, and um, it just, it was pretty stressful <laughs> uh, doing that. And then we found out about, no, it was after that that we found out about conventions, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, oh, I didn't know you could just peel them off like that. <gasps> Y'all! Look at that. Blomp. Um, it was September of 2008. We were like, we're doing okay at craft shows, but if Randy was looking at me, he's like, I'm getting paid. They had raised a minimum wage, is what it was. Um, and Randy got a, was it a five cent cost of living raise? Yeah, because it brought him one cent over what minimum wage was. And he was like, this is an opportunity. We can't make ends meet right now. Living is absolutely, like, wh what do you do whenever it's like, oh, you know, we'll just cut this corner and we'll cut that corner and we'll cut this corner. Um, and then there, there are no more corners to cut. We were eating like beans and rice and bologna. That was it. Like, uh, we could barely keep our bills paid. And it's not like we didn't drink, we didn't smoke, we didn't go out. Like, we were just trying to keep our heads above water. And he was like, I can't make ends meet working full time at my job. This is bullshit. Um, so he's like, if I quit, it'll be six months before they'll rehire me. Like, because that's their uh, stipulate, like, rules, I guess. Um, and so in September of 2008, ran we took the risk we jumped and we were like worst case scenario um you know we lose everything and you can get hired back on at walmart in six months and that was big math uh that was 2008 so however long ago that was um but it's 
we were able to do more craft shows. Like it went from being able to, you can only ask for so many days off to we were doing a craft show every weekend. Um, and then we had met somebody at a craft show, uh, actually on MySpace. We had met this person on MySpace and they were like, oh my God, you make chain mail. And I was like, oh my God, you make chain mail too? And he's like, yeah. And so we met him at a craft show and he told us about, he's like, well, why don't you guys vend at conventions? And we were like, vend at what? And that's when we found out about conventions and he helped us get us, like, he helped us sign up for our first convention and, uh, like, we all rode up to the con together. He had a hotel room, but we slept in our van because we were like, we ain't got money for a hotel room. <laughs> it's like, this is, we're not bougie over here. Um, and... <laughs> <laughs> so it was January and it was raining it was cold and it was in Chattanooga Tennessee um and we we did amazing and we were like oh my god because there are no craft shows in January like it's <laughs> certainly not outdoor ones in that kind of weather and that's what we were running into is that you know people would if the weather was decent and there wasn't a local sporting event and it wasn't too hot and it wasn't too cold and it wasn't you know too sunny or too overcast then you might do well at the craft shows um but with conventions it was just amazing and that's that became our bread and butter for a long time and then we there was one year uh, like we were we were living the dream i'm not gonna lie we were living our dream for oh about a decade um working hard yeah but living our dream of traveling and then it was in about 2017 or 2018 that we uh we had done 32 shows that year nine of which were immediately back to back to back and we like at the beginning of the nine weeks and at the end of the nine weeks of us doing all of these shows we had no more money than what we did at the beginning of the nine weeks. So it was like all of that work was for nothing because conventions had gotten so expensive because um, hotels used to, when we started doing this, we could book a hotel for 40 bucks a night. Now it would be like a roach motel, but I don't care. It's, it has a bed and a toilet and that's what we needed. Um, and you could get a nice place for like 60 bucks. And now those same roach motels are like 80 or 90 bucks a night. Um, so that was, it just got more and more expensive to do conventions. There were over 700 conventions in the country. Um, so it's like the market was super saturated. It was getting really challenging. So we started, you know, teaching panels and started doing YouTube tutorials um, and different stuff like that, just to, you know, I really liked teaching, and after making stuff for 10 years, it was a lot of fun to, you know, kind of revisit my roots of whenever I was just starting out, and, you know, teaching just makes everything new again, because y'all are so creative, and so, um, just inventive, and, like, you have ideas and experiences that I can't even fathom, and so I've been so inspired by teaching, like, I feel like I've learned way more than I've ever been able to, uh, <laughs> to put out there, um, like, I, I feel like I get way more <laughs> education from y'all than what I offer to you guys, so, uh, thank you guys for that, but, and then YouTube took off, and it's like, who'd have even thought and now we don't even vend at conventions because, uh, well, Rona and our van died and we haven't been, like, we can't replace our van. Um, I haven't done a craft show yet, says Sea Glass, just online at the minute. Do you plan on doing more craft shows? We would really, really like to. Um, we just, uh, we'd, we'd have to rent a van for it. And it's, we're kind of waiting for things to balance out. Um, and so it's, our, our business really shifted gears hard and we focus mostly on our online, like our, ooh, shop updates on Mondays and our craft along club is kind of, you know, but we never want to put all of our eggs in one basket because we've also, I mean, I've been trying to do good with the fulfilling the craft along kits, but I understand finances are getting tight for just about everybody. 
so we've had like a mass exodus of like our craft along club and also like our shop updates are not doing as good so we're like ah we're always on our toes waiting for that next thing to um you know be ready for because the rug will get pulled out from under our feet we just want to be ready for it so that's what we're kind of working on right now and instead of getting all super stressed out about that i'm just focusing on the core of everything that we want and that's to be able to teach you guys how to get your craft on so i don't want it to be back to work creations um, did you ever get a chance to see the end result of the choker? I didn't, Gary. I'm so sorry. I forgot. <laughs> hey, Bella Ann. Oh, it's don't 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 you dare apologize. Like things have been amazing, and even now when things get tight, all that Randy and I do is we tighten our belts, and keep on keeping on it's what we do i started doing um a year of yoga over on the vlog channel which i'm really excited about uh we figured when things when things get hard you band together so we're banding together with our friends at world of strange and doing some different merch lines um to try to bring fresh you know fresh stuff to the table but also through each purchase of those Y'all are not just helping to support Randy and I, but you're helping to support our friends in Nashville, Tennessee, um, who are just awesome people. Like, they're basically, uh, I don't know if you can adopt grown-ups, and I don't know if they'd adopt us or if we'd adopt them, but they're our family. Like, period. So, <coughs> it makes my heart so happy that, first off, that they have amazing products that I'm proud to have our, you know, to be associated with, but also they're just amazing people who love us just the way we are, and I like that. <laughs> are you planning any more live streams where you sell and make on camera? I am, Sabea. Okay, we are doing our last Friday of the month. I have it on the calendar, but I don't have it as a craft long -thon. I'm actually going to be wire wrapping quartz crystals for you guys. Um, so I'm pretty excited about that. I think they're going to be like, it's like three to five dollars a piece just for the crystal. And then if you want it wrapped as well, like it'll be like, I think it'll either start or total out at 15. I haven't talked to Randy about the pricing yet. Um, but probably next week's live stream, we'll be doing prototyping of that. <clears throat> just passing it through the pasta machine. <coughs> Excuse me. So it's, I don't know, we're always, we're always hustling the hustle and <laughs> trying to figure out, but I don't want to lose myself in a quest for, you know, getting, keeping my bills paid. Like, we currently aren't shipping, um, to the UK. Well, we aren't shipping to the EU, um, because of like the vat and stuff but we do ship it's just it's expensive um and we haven't had tremendous <laughs> success with packages actually arriving um especially to like australia and stuff so we're trying to play it by ear and figure it out Ooh, i like that i just like it's so, it's so soothing. Like, I'm kind of stressed out thinking about everything, but it's so nice to be just working the clay. <laughs> right on. Oh, there we go. Hmm. Actually, I forget what I was going to be trying to do with this clay. I think I've just been stress conditioning it. But everything's going to be okay. And then the vet uh, declined another surgery for Sam. So we'll kind of figure that out too. 
so pretty. I love that blue. Okay, so should we do... I'm going to try moons out of this one as well. Okay, I'm going to fold this and just set it off to the side. There we go. Hey, Plushy, how's it going? <laughs> Late night ASMR. Very cool. Okay, just setting that down like this. And then I'm going to start with... I don't want to do it just right in the middle, but I really want to, okay, yeah, we'll do it right here. There we go. <clears throat> yeah, it just holds its shape so much better when it's on the thickest set. All right, Savannah. <laughs> oh no, Kelly. And now we're going to come in just right there, I think, and smush. Yes, I think that's going to be perfect. There we go. This is my favorite way of making cabs, especially crescent moons, because there's so little waste. You're able to just start at one end with a round and then just chop, chop, chop. That's your TikTok? Would the round ones be able to get a groove? <clears throat> um, I don't know. I still haven't tried it with my machine yet because I didn't want to gunk it up. Um... But it kind of just fuses the polymer clay. Like, not the polymer clay as much as the resin. I'm going to have to test it. I'm going to have to test it. Right? And I just may. I was actually thinking about putting some of my personal stuff on my TikTok as well. Because that's... I mean, I had taken a lot of my personal stuff off of this channel. Because there were a lot of people who were like, you yeah, know, nobody cares about your garden. And I was like, well, thanks. <laughs> but I... You know, this is my life. I don't want to have to filter myself out of my own life just to be more palatable, you know, to somebody who's nothing but sour stuff to say anyways. Um, and if I'm not having fun with this crap, then why am I even here? And that's something I was working through, and I am back and being fully myself and really enjoying it. But I was thinking about bringing that to my TikTok as well. Because, especially since it's such, like, we don't have a whole lot of followers on TikTok, so right now I can kind of do whatever the heck I want, because nobody's watching anyways. <laughs> and I have absolutely love that freedom of, like, you clicked on my face, bastard. <laughs> like, don't come sassing me if, you know, it's not what you like. Oh, Sabaya! You're so sweet. Thank you. Cheryl, that is a really good idea. She says they better were thick enough you could poke a wire around it before baking yes definitely hey inspired hey heather i've been popping in and out but so glad to see you live i've been watching your scale little videos today trying to make some cauldrons for the ren fair right on uh, well y'all are the greatest though is the difference <laughs> okay so now i'm gonna come through i just love this backdrop oh he's so juicy and plump oh he's such a real cute little Okay, so I'm going to take it, I'm going to smoosh, and we'll take it with this, and we'll, like, yeah, smoosh, I'm going to take it like this, smoosh, Ooh. I love it, love, love, love it, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. oh yeah, here we come into that blue. Very cool. 
<clears throat> so now we can just pull up all that stuff. I actually think I'm going to work with one of our artist friends to help me design the uh, graphics for the I may not be your cup of tea, but I wasn't brewed for you. Um, I really, really need that on literally everything. Like, I want to make pins. I want to make shirts. I want to, like, um, because that, oh, I'm feeling that hard. <laughs> Aw. Oh, Scarborough Fair is the greatest. Well, also really like Bristol, but Scarborough's up there. <laughs> Make mugs, right? I want to take us. Oh, <coughs> pardon me while I have a fit. Um, I want to take a pottery class so bad, you guys, so bad. <laughs> but yeah, so some of them from the same sheet. You might not have even known, you know, which ones were next to each other and which ones weren't. We just got some really, oh, I love it. And these really come to life, you guys, whenever we have um, the resin on there. All right on, Lila. Okay, so now I'm going to, oh, how am I going to do this? Okay, um, <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do. Where's a thing that I can put stuff on? <laughs> Uh-oh. Oh, maybe? Oh, that was precarious. <laughs> okay. Sorry, I'm like juggling the, the situation over here. So again, I have another work surface. I'm just gonna slide that on like that. Super pretty. And now I'm going to, without dropping my super glue from earlier, bring this over. Well, pardon you, sir dog. Oh no, it leaked. So this, is different than what I wanted. So let's go through and do some science. So it just kind of separated out into a way that like it's all just that gold pigment. Because I really wanted more like how we have that over here. So what we can do There's our brush. I'm going to get just a little bit more. And if you don't like how it came out, you can just repaint it. <laughs> and I don't think I'm going to put quite so much liquid on it this time. I'm just getting a little bit. Like, I don't think I'm going to spray it. I just want to build up some colors and stuff. And I'm just kind of tap, rotate, tap, rotate, tap, rotate. Like, if you can kind of see how that's coming through. And this is going to help us, I think, to get some nice, and we can get just a little bit more of that water on there. And so sometimes less is more, but don't feel like just because it didn't come out like perfect on the first layer, you can come through and goober this stuff up all the ding dong day. Ah, right on Kelly. Ooh, yes, a map. Oh, that's so cool. Oh my gosh, you guys, if we could like have like a map and then do the stuff on it and then cut out little pieces from like the map. ASMR time. Absolutely love that. Mm -hmm. 
Well, it's been a lot of fun going down memory lane with you guys. Sometimes we get so focused in our daily lives, I know I do, about just like kind of focusing on where we're going and the stress is immediately at hand that I forget to kind of just appreciate everything that's smoldering on the path behind us. <laughs> I will not drink my paint water. I will not drink my paint water. I will not drink my paint water. Really want to drink the paint water. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Oh, it's my pleasure, Pinky. I just really like watching the swirls. Oh, <laughs> Kaima says, I took pottery classes years ago and it was so amazing you should do it. I'm gonna. I don't know which studio I want to go to, but I really want to go. And Oh, look at how pretty this is. Like now that it's drying and separating. Oh, yeah, I like this way better. And now from here, we can do a little bit of... the paint kind of sliding. How do we get it to dry faster? Like, <laughs> ah, I hate waiting. <laughs> but no, I'd really love to make like our own mugs and stuff. I, I have a, a fantasy of like making all of our own dishes. Um, except of course for the precious mugs that y'all have sent us over the years. But I want to make like our own slumped glass glasses and plates and make our own like pottery bowls. Um, <laughs> right on Drex's mom. Uh, bye, Kaslin. Thanks for hanging out. Dry faster, cursed paint. <laughs> ah! Where's. Well, I've got a fan. Ooh, I wonder. Oh, maybe I would need a straw for that? No, I'm gonna try it with the fan first. Y'all wanna watch paint dry? Boom, here we go. Oh yeah. It's on high now. Boo do do do. I'm impatient, yeah. Do 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 do. Tired of waiting, yeah. I'm gonna go from this way. Do 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 do. Do 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 do. <laughs> it's like if you don't drive faster, I'll have my robot blow on you. <laughs> Wait, fans aren't robots, are they? They're just machines. How do I get a how do I get a fan to become like how do I make it into a robot? Do I like put it on a Roomba? Is that a robot? Or a machine? Like what's the difference? Ooh, a heat gun. Possibly, except for I don't want to start curing the clay at all, because I'm gonna be cutting it. <laughs> and I'm really trying to like stop myself from sticking my hand in it because I really want to just <laughs> oh my god this is still taking forever oh. <sighs> I will be patient yep yeah, hey let's do some Q&A time what do y'all think of that well we <laughs> Lila's like ding, ding, ding. I love it put this back up here. Like, oh my god, I die a thousand deaths if I have to wait <laughs> on something crafty to happen. <laughs> like, I cannot. It's not physically paining me, but pretty stinking close, y'all. How do I turn my camera around? There we go. Okay, so, Q&A time. Y'all provide the Q's, I'll provide the A's. Oh, that's so horrible. <laughs> okay. So, uh, I can see your questions here. Why, wow, this is finger painting. Ooh, Drax's mom says, been watching those acrylic pouring videos on Facebook too mesmerizing. I bet. 
<laughs> Do you have you uh have you ever done stairs at glass? I'm not sure what you mean, Beth. Ooh, favorite house plant in particular or favorite house plant in general like species? Cuz I don't want to I don't want to pick favorites. But I really like my peperomia. She's such a good plant and her name's Madison and I got her at a street festival with my good friend Lara up in Madison, Wisconsin while she was going to college there and she and I both got a cutting of it and um, she named hers Alora and I named mine Madison because those were the towns that we lived in at the time and every other peperomia plant in the house um, is a descendant with the exception of I do have a variegated variety that I picked up from somewhere else but all of the non-variegated peperomia plants in my house are a descendant of Madison um yeah so <laughs> um that's probably my favorite house plant though also there is I don't even know what it is but it's a hanging plant that's in my kitchen that Randy got me for one year for our anniversary or was it Valentine's Day they're really close it might have been it just our annual I love you plant and it was during a particularly just rough time like money was tight everything was hard I was being a real shit bird but he got me this plant and I was like I'm going to water it and it is going to thrive and it is a metaphor for us um <laughs> and we kept watering it and it kept thriving so it's it's like our little love plant like I love that plant and then I also really like that one that's doing really good but it's, yeah that one's probably another one of my favorites I don't know what it is but I love it um and then also uh I have a snake plant that I really like I really like my pothoses um no the one in the kitchen is like it's purple on the bottom of the leaves or is it the top of the leaves I don't know but we have we have a descendant of it in the bathroom as well that I water when I shower <laughs> so they'll just like, put it in the shower with me and take a bath with my plant um yeah Gary says you say that in front of the other plants they'll get jealous I know um we have a pothos up in our bedroom that actually grew up into our friend Misty. Misty, if you still watch my stuff, I love and miss you and hope you're doing awesome. Um, she sent us years ago this like LED tree that now has a pothos growing up through it. Like I'm using it to train the, um, the branches, like the branches of the tree have the pothos growing all over it and it's huge. Um, I don't have any jade plants. And then my friend Holly sent me, was it a spider plant? Love it. And now I've got spider plant planted in almost all of my plants. Um, is there a plant I don't like? Nope. I like them all. Uh, ooh, Sandra says, who besides Randy has influenced you most in crafting? That's a really good question that I've never considered before. Um, the trouble is, is I'm very bad with names. So let's see. Um, in leatherworking, I was probably most inspired by... Um, what's his name? It's Prince Armory is... Um, the company you can find him here on YouTube but I had seen his work at one of the Ren Asma yep um I think his name's like Samuel Lee though but I had seen his work on DeviantArt maybe this was a lifetime ago you guys like and I, I was like I want to I want to make stuff like that that's amazing and that's what started my whole leather working uh, with polymer clay. Uh, it was somebody who made little cakes on DeviantArt. And then I can't pronounce their name, but it starts with an I. And I'd actually suggested them for a daily, de daily deviation whenever I was over on DeviantArt. Um, and because he, he had made this amazing chainmail chess set. And I just thought his work was so cool. And I was really inspired by him. 
and it's there's so many like I can't like I, I'm Oxana Crafts Mithril like there's the people 15 years ago that I was following online there was um you know people who are inspiring me now ZD Artisan um Melissa Woodjul it's just too many there are too many names you guys I cannot even every freaking one of y'all that every time you guys send me images and stuff it's just um probably Lisa Barth with her timeless wire weaving that's what started me into actual wire weaving and not just wire wrapping and that was a huge turning point for me uh Karina Tedinger and oh shoot I can't remember her name our lampwork glass artists that <laughs> Um, I don't know, like you basically have just asked me to name every person I've ever met uh, because I, there's every, like, I I, can't, I don't know if I can track it. Like, you know, all the, our friends with World of Strange inspire my work ethic significantly. Um, super inspired by a bunch of folks in the con circuit just seeing how hard they work through all sorts of just, sometimes you were really mucking through it um ah uh, bye jennifer thanks for hanging out <laughs> oh kj asked how do you organize your completed products um we used to keep them in these tackle boxes up high there but now I actually have them do you see that bin on the floor right there that has everything I've made in the past six months in it <laughs> because I they were heavy and they're up high <laughs> but um I don't know it's all just a complete and total cluster right now um, <laughs> I like that, Gary. Yeah, um, Bob Ross, uh, Julia Child, Mike Rowe, Adam Savage. Like, those are probably, like, the, the famous people that I, like, kind of idolize um, and would be honored to emulate. Like, to their, that style of, like, teaching and just, I don't know, like, seem like cool cats. Um, if you're lucky, you sell them and you don't have to store any completed products. Exactly. And that's kind of, we haven't really bought more materials a whole lot, um, for like jewelry purposes. We're trying to kind of cook through what we've got, um, which can be challenging. This paint still is not dry. Um, but we make a lot of fused glass and stuff. Uh, Wild DM. I don't know. I'm still just like thinking. It's like there's so much. Like I can't even begin <laughs> to answer that one. Um. Uh, well, thanks for hanging out, Susan. It's actually probably about time for us to go as well. Um, I have got to go out and do a bit of gardening before it rains. Um, if we're lucky for it to rain. Um, how do you decide which craft slash art to do on a given day considering all the things you do? Oh, hey, Acid. Well, if you guys keep throwing questions at me, I'll keep answering them. How about that? Because um, I'm just waiting for this paint to dry. <laughs> um, all right on, Kelly. Well, I'm glad to be helpful to you. Okay. Um, how do I decide which art? Uh, a lot of it has to do with everything that Randy and I do revolves around creating content for our YouTube channel here with you guys. Um, and a lot of the time I'll be, if I just feel like doing wire wrapping or if I have an idea for a polymer clay thing or, you know, something, then that'll be what I'm working on so that's what I'm doing tutorials of so I keep working on that until I finish that tutorial um and then it is we do so much like basically just loading our kiln trying to make fused glass stuff um and then I don't know like 
It's a little bit of a blur. <laughs> so it's kind of whatever, whatever I feel drawn to that day, if I have time to be able to just go and um, apply myself to that thing. Because there's a lot of days that I don't even, I'm not even able to like really fit in crafting, um, which is unfortunate considering, you know, I craft for a living. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but there'll just be some days that it's like, all we can do is um, fused glass stuff, trying to get that together. Or like Randy's been looking at um, possibly driving for like Amazon or doing Walmart grocery delivery. Like we're trying to kind of see if that's a viable option. So I don't know. I don't know how to answer that because it's, I'm not always my, my own person to get to decide what I craft. So, but it's, um, I don't know. That's old me talking. That's me trying to make the algorithm happy talking. Honest to goodness, like a couple of weeks ago, I was like, I'm tired of this. I'm going to do whatever I want. And I started making polymer clay stuff. And so uh, that's, that's what I'm trying to hold true to because it's, it is not back to work creations. <laughs> um, oh, Beth says, what is your favorite projects? I absolutely stinking love polymer clay and lampwork glass. I also like wire wrapping, but it makes my hands hurt <laughs> a lot, um, especially those weaving pieces. And I think it's because I'm trying to wrap at the rate that I used to. Um, and my calluses just aren't what they used to be. Um, so I'm going to have to build my way back up to that. But um, I've really, really, really been enjoying polymer clay. And I'm looking at it drying. And it's taking forever, but it's super pretty yellow. <laughs> oh, thanks, Sabea. Um, uh, hey, Valerie, how's it going? Let me see what you do if you watch a planetarium event. Your glass tabs are just amazing. Mm. I like that. <laughs> but, okay, I do got to go do some stuff in the garden before it gets dark and or rainy. So I will see you guys in Sunday's tutorial. Ah! which is actually going to be this jewelry box that I'm working on uh, with these guys. So I'm um, doing some really big three-dimensional stuff. That's what I'm going to be working on tomorrow. Um, and keep an eye out for our shop update on Monday where we will have our cute little these bad boys getting capped in resin and then we will see y'all yeah uh sunday's tutorial monday's shop update thursday's tutorial and then friday's live stream again so keep being awesome you guys and uh yeah i think that's everything <laughs> if you have any questions either leave a comment down below or send us an email and until next time happy crafting Mwah. bye <laughs> I think that was everything, right? <laughs>